as a young scientist, I didn't really have any mentor until I met John. If you were to ask me who actually helped me the most with my career, and I would say John, because he just has a passion for science. We worked together for almost 50 years, and we had a great time doing it. When I was younger, my mother wanted me to go to England to continue with my piano. I didn't say no because I wanted an opportunity to travel and to see the world and maybe to find out who I am, you know, because I was quite young then. I was 16 years old, but I really didn't like it very much. I actually was more interested in science. I arrived in Boston, 1974. There was a seminar and there was this fellow, young guy, that sat right across the table from me. And I was taken aback because he was very handsome. So I said, hmm, who is this guy? But I didn't have enough courage to talk to him at that, that one situation. But then I kept seeing him everywhere. And then finally, it was a Friday night. We went to Copley Plaza. I was talking to this guy for a little bit, and then all of a sudden I saw John walked in, and I said, haven't I met you someplace before? I didn't even know there was a pickup line. Then that was the first time I ever picked up anyone. And then that was it, and we were together literally from that on. We were deciding what can we do for the next 10 years that would make an impact in the field. So John and I decided that we want to study neurodegenerative diseases because at that time, if you look into brain of patients with Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease, you see a lot of this unusual accumulation in their brain. So what are they? What are they built from? They definitely are brain proteins, but how do they become abnormal? We don't know the protein behind the pathology. In the 70s and in 80s, we know that beta amyloid plaques is one of the two major pathology. And in fact, I think that for a while, people didn't even take tau too seriously. But we had a feeling that the field was making a mistake. So I said to John, we need to straighten this out because, you know, this area is very important and I don't want people to go down the wrong path. And so we actually published a paper in PNES basically showing that it is tau. So that was very important to demonstrate that tau itself could be a killer protein and can cause a disease. With a combination of his skill set and mine, he educated me a lot and educated him a lot. So I just kept going. We basically made thousands and thousands of antibodies. So we actually systematically identified each of the protein, like neurofibritangle is comprised of tau protein, and then after that we showed that alpha-synuclein is a building block of Lewy bodies in Parkinson's disease, and then we identified this protein called TDB43. So we provide some answers for the field, and neurodegenerative disease research just took off from there. John and I decided to implement this to really try to recruit the next generation of neurodegenerative disease investigators at CNDR. Because Penn has a collaborative culture, and that's very important, particularly if you are working on diseases and you want to understand a disease or come up with treatment for disease, and really by definition require everybody. In any research for any disease, the most challenging aspect would be to be able to come up with therapy. And that's the space we're in right now. Treatment is beginning to happen. I never thought that we would be here in my lifetime, that we have potential therapy that are being tested now. I want UGGF disease research to continue at a very high level at the University of Pennsylvania. And I've never been more hopeful that it will.